96 Rock, Cincinnati's Pure Rock. JD with you guys this afternoon with our special guests who are in studio here today. They're going to be performing at Bogarts tonight, and uh, you can come out to the show and uh, join me. I will be there as well, the uh, guys from Hollywood Undead. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. What's going on? Hola. All right, so in- introduce yourselves to everybody so they know exactly who we're talking to. Hey, what's going on? My name is Danny. Hi, the curls. Uh, this is J Dog, but I don't have that raspy. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are going to be at Bogart tonight. Uh, you guys were just telling me off air. You guys just came uh, in from Cleveland last night, yeah. so kind of our sister city yeah. over there in the north. And uh, you, you guys did something a little special last night. You had a, a friend of yours join you on stage. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess he's pretty known in this state, or at least in Cleveland. Uh, Machine Gun Kelly mm-hmm. is a friend of ours, and uh, he came and joined us on stage last night for coming in hot. That's pretty cool. So, uh, how are things in Cleveland? It was, it was great. Really good. It was cool when he came on stage. He was wearing like a bandana, and people just thought he was just some dude, and, like just dancing around. <laughs> some on random stage. guy. <laughs> Halfway through the song, he like took the bandana off, and the crowd went wild. Like, oh my god! Yeah, and he was like, uh, uh, because Jordan was like, hey, can you uh, introduce yourself? And he's like, oh yeah, my name's uh, Kelly, but uh, some people know me as Machine Gun Kelly. And the crowd's like, yeah. <laughs> ripped his clothes off, like straight off. Just went naked. I started. <laughs> I started sweating more. I was like. <laughs> My guitar got all slippery. Oh, He's like the hometown hero there. Yeah, yeah, we've uh, we've heard of him down here. I don't know if we, we I don't know who we would bring who we'd bring on stage he at Bogarts. Ah, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Did yeah. Marilyn Manson play Bogarts like not too long ago? Yeah, yeah, not too long ago. I actually uh, I didn't get to go to that one. I was out of town. Really, yeah. it was a bummer though. But uh, sold out show there, and uh, I guess he killed it pretty good. So. Yeah, yeah, you know the band that was opening that uh, tour, Butcher Babies. The Butcher Babies. Oh. Yeah, they, I, they got they got good pl- t- like tape placement. Breast metal, man. Yeah, yeah. That's, breast metal. That's what our friend uh, Danny Loner, you know, the dude that was in Nine Inch Nails that we worked on that yeah. song. We are with. He's like, because uh, Heidi from Butcher Babies, my girlfriend's best friend, and. He's like, you know, you know that band Butcher Babies. I was like, yeah. He's like, they're a great breast metal band. <laughs> <laughs> that, if there's a genre that we can call it, I guess we could do that. Yeah. So uh, we just got to uh, see you guys at Rock on the Range recently as well. You guys uh, did that for your uh, the second time. You guys have been there. How was yeah. that for uh, the second time around after doing it the first time and seeing what it's all about? What you guys think about, about it, was, it? It was awesome. Uh, every time we go there, it's always like a blast to just play that. You know, it's one of the best festivals in this nation. So, mm-hmm. but this time we got to move up to the main stage. And yep. Just the difference of you know, just to to see that happening, it was it was amazing. And our friend uh, Fieldy from Corn even came out and did everywhere I go with this. I'm sure you guys saw that. Right? Yeah, Fieldy's yeah. a Fieldy's a badass. Yeah. It's good to see those guys all back together right? again. Except yeah. I mean, they don't have the drummer back yet, but uh, just to have you know head back up there with them too is pretty. Oh cool. yeah, yeah, the dynamic is a lot better. Mm-hmm. You could even because I've seen him play so many times. The energy is like there again you know seeing them play with that i was like wow like, i could see like the old you know vibe that they have is mm-hmm. bad you could see the crowd could feel it too I yeah like a little schoolboy. <laughs> i think i was just drunk someone kept giving me moonshine and, yeah like, I, I, I think That's I, was, true. I was hallucinating half the yeah. time so do you guys like doing the uh those big festival shows like that or do you guys prefer doing like uh the clubs like bogarts both man festivals are awesome to spike once in a while because you get the crowd it's like it's huge it's fun you get to hang out with all these bands you know you get to go out in the crowd but then, you know, we did a lot on that last tour, and it's kind of like, all right, I'm, like, I want to go play small clubs because the energy is just better. People are there to only see you, you know. Mm-hmm. You don't have some fat dude in a Metallica shirt just flipping you <laughs> off the whole time. Plus, we have, like, a lot of new songs from the the record that we wanted to add to the set. And at festival shows, you know, you get a certain amount of time, and here we get to do our full set. Mm-hmm. What, what What's your full set uh, time-wise usually now? About 75 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering, because when you get, uh, you know, like you said, the festival one, sometimes they knock you down to, like, 25 because they got so many bands. Bands, they gotta get through on the stage, and it's like, dude, right when you get warmed up, it's time to yeah, yeah. down it's, it's, already. It's, they call it throw and go. You gotta get up mm-hmm. there, do it, and get off. Yeah, know? that's yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Yeah, we, those are that. usually like forty minutes, but this way we get to do like a good sixteen, seventeen songs. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So uh, we're gonna have you guys at Bogarts tonight. Uh, we're gonna play some music here, and then we're gonna get back with uh, with you guys to talk more about uh, the the albums and uh, some other and babes. And babes. Yeah. We'll talk more about chicks who wear tape over their nipples yeah. and things like that. That's what oh, we like no, to no. do. Mm-hmm. So we'll have more with Hollywood and Daddy. And we're joined by the guys from uh, Hollywood Undead, who are going to be performing tonight at Bogarts this evening. And uh, tickets do remain. If you want to go to the Bogarts box office, you can also visit LiveNation.com. But you guys will be uh, on stage, uh, Escape the Fate, and All Hail the Yeti? Is that that who that is? Yeah, it's the opening band. And then there's also Three Pill Morning. Okay. And uh, then Escape the Fate, yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah, I'd I'd never heard of that band before. And I was like, yes, that's a great name. Yeah. Got a whole vibe. They wear uh, flannels and, like, in between songs, there's, like, crickets. And it's like they got a whole uh, foresty vibe to them. (laughs) Yeah. 
a southern metal vibe. I have to, yeah. I have to get there early yeah, to please. check it out. Yeah, they're a great band, though. Very that good, that good, sounds good, interesting. Good. So, uh, with all of you guys on stage together, let's talk about your stage show here. Uh, so many of you guys up there doing what you do. How many times do you guys run into each other? Does that happen a lot? Yeah, we uh, kind of got it down to a science, though. <laughs> we we uh, kind of revolve around each other, and there's a lot of little... Uh, secret touches that you know how to like you know pass around but there's i don't know it, it happens but that's part of the nature of the beast of what we do you know yeah i was wondering if you guys ever did like any kind of choreography like you no, guys practice like no, okay no, we're gonna no. go i'm gonna go this way and you guys go that way and just kind of work no, it out or it's, it's just not so controlled like, we like the chaos we like yeah. the bumping, yeah. like control like, chaos. Like, like you're saying with there's so many of us we also play instruments, instruments yeah like, it's constantly revolving I try to get these guys to learn how to moonwalk. They weren't into it, you know. <laughs> Synchronized moonwalking, like in yeah. between songs. I think that was the first dance I ever learned was the moonwalk. I mean, what? MJ was the man back oh, in me back when you were yeah. a little kid. I don't know if I get. I don't know if these will allow me to yeah, do such right. things. Yeah, right. I got, I got, I got great traction right. on these yeah. new shoes. Yeah, right I, I can moonwalk like Michael Jackson, but uh, I, can oops, it, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it in socks. We can it might do that. be easy tonight because Bogarts is like kind of known for being like a very hot and heavy. It, like, the it walls are pretty, sweating. Yeah, it might get a little humid in there tonight, oh, yeah. especially with all the rain that we're getting now, and yeah. then of course the big crowd that's going oh, yeah. to be there tonight. It's a, it's a sweat box. In Hopefully, there. we'll see a lot of girls' boobs tonight. Oh my god! I'm like holding my face, like thinking about it. Uh, hmm. Boobies. <laughs> you talking to yourself or us? I don't, I don't know anymore. <laughs> so before you guys go up on stage, uh, you guys got any like little rituals or anything you guys do before you go, or you just hit it? Yeah, we listen to uh, some James Brown, crank it up real loud in the dressing room. We have a little dance party. <laughs> do you really? Yeah. That's real? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for real. Favorite James Brown song to go on before you guys go on? Mm, do you have a certain one? Get up off of that. Yeah. I don't know the name. Sorry. I don't think anybody knows the name. That is yeah. not a song. We just, I think we just shut up. Oh. Yeah. The only one I know is the one that he did on uh, Rocky Four. That's the only one that I know the actual name of the song. America. Living in America. Uh, living in America. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we all sort of just get together, listen to music, dance, you know, because as soon as we go out there, it's like we're a group, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, even if we're spread out during the day, like J Dog's working on uh, the remix right now for our, our latest single, Dead Bite. So we're all busy throughout the day doing different things, but just before the show, we have some drinks, party, and then we go out and do our thing. Biggest fear before you guys go on stage scares you to death. Mm -hmm. Anything? Uh, I don't know. Maybe that our our in ear packs might not work. I don't know. Something like, technical. <laughs> it's nothing really about like the audience yeah. or anything. It's more like make sure everything sounds right. I uh, I get scared of falling off the riser sometimes, but yeah. it's never happened because you're you know you're up there. You're like ten feet in the air when mm -hmm. you're standing on it and. Sometimes, you know, you're jumping around and like there's no guard between you and that floor. So it's like sometimes I'm like, man, I might fall off that thing. Yeah, yeah. see, a lot, a lot of bands will use like a harness or whatever, but you know, uh, you just uh, go for it. Harness? Are yeah. you serious? Like they have it where they strap. Yeah. We would just saw, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the band Skillet at all, yeah. but we just saw them and uh, we're kind of buddies with uh, their guitarist Seth. And I was asking him about that because he's got the big ones that go up. And I was like, dude, do you ever just like lose your mind up there? Because you can't jam or anything you just kind of kind of stands in he's like well you know you just strap on the thing and i was like oh you have one of those yeah so if he fell it would catch him uh, yeah he would just dangle i guess i would dangle and play the most bitchin <laughs> solo you've ever heard of <laughs> you're sort of solo. dangling over the stage and yeah. blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking with hollywood undead who are going to be at bogart's tonight uh let's talk about the album noises from the underground uh came out at the beginning of the year now fans who uh went out got swan songs and then uh american tragedy what about this album sets apart from uh, the, those first two. It was a lot of fun to make. I mean, you know, the the second record was a lot of pressure. I said it before. It's called like the sophomore curse. It's like your second album come out, and if it doesn't do good, your band's done. You know, so many bands got like a first record, and they're like, okay, you get success, and then uh, I don't know if it goes to their heads or what it is. They write a second album. It's just totally different. Their fans don't dig it. Whatever. There's no singles on it. There's mm -hmm. no radio play, and your band's kind of done. And you're like, all right, well, we're just gonna tour forever on the fame on our first record. So. Once we got past that pressure of the second record, you know, it did really well. We, the, making the third one was just so much fun. It was like, it's like, all right, we did it, guys. So now we can have fun and not worry, like, am I going to have to stop doing this anytime soon? We got to keep doing it. So it was awesome. Yeah, we got to go back and uh, actually do some songs with Danny Loner for Nine Inch Nails, mm -hmm. who did like Undead and some other tracks from Swan Songs. And it brought that element back. But yeah, this was, in my opinion, a record that we were all having a hard time deciding what songs to go on because we loved all of them like there was a lot of tracks how many did we have at the end there was like there was like 20, 30 some 29 or something like that. Yeah. wow 
It's a good you know, problem to have, you know. Yeah. <laughs> a lot Narrowing of, it down to 14 or whatever is, is difficult, you know? Yeah. Well, well, why not just do like a, a double album if everything's so good? Or are you going to push maybe it's some of those onto the, a new the album? The politics that be, because people politics. don't realize this, Japan has to have a song that America doesn't have, you know? The UK has to have a song that America doesn't have. Best Buy has to have a song that iTunes doesn't have. Yeah. iTunes has to have the song that Best Buy doesn't have. That's why so, there's all the different versions yeah, exactly. of the, yeah. the yeah. album. Yeah, exactly. Uh, your but songs you have, end up spreading all over the world. Like. But you have the focus tracks, like we have uh, We Are, and then our latest uh, single, Dead Bite, which mm. actually like uh, we shot a video for just before the tour, which uh, you know, J-Dog actually came up with the whole idea, and he can explain about that. You look like you like porn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm into porn. What's up? We had our friend uh, Craven Moorhead direct it, who's a Peter Norse uh, personal director. Uh-huh. So, you know... We came up with the idea and he casted the video. Like we got Jaden James in it, Lisa Ann, Tara Patrick, and the RJ Mitt from Breaking Bad. That kid, you know the, the kid. Who, okay, okay. The kid yeah. who eats breakfast. Like I'm hungry, dog. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he's the main guy in the video. He uh, he knows the other guy in our band, Johnny. So it's when the video is actually crazy. There's always like famous porn stars and like actors, and then we're just mm. kind of dangling around, drunk, swinging, playing solos. You know, it, it, it was tough a, day at the office. Yeah, huh? it, was, it was great though too because uh, Craven actually directed uh, a video from the last record, "Been to Hell." So we knew what he can do, and you know, with the budget that we had and all the people involved, it's it's going to be great. Cool, cool. Well, uh, we'll actually we'll get that uh, video. We'll get that posted. Drive home. Those uh, barking dogs that you're hearing are the uh, members of Hollywood Undead who are hanging out with us, and uh, we're in a uh, commercial-free hour right now. All so right. Uh, we're we're spending some time with the guys, playing some music, talking music, and um, just being all around fun, drinking yeah, some beers, drinking some beers, watching Always the rain the, outside. I get confused. The uh, the singer of White Snake and Judas Priest. Which one's the one that's the the gay dude? That Judas is Rob. Priest. That's Rob Halford. Yeah, he's got the bald head. Bald head. Yeah, so White, White Snake doesn't he look the same? I don't think no. so. I don't know. White Snake's guy's got hair. Really? At least he had hair last time I. Well, they're both saw super cute. About so that's all I can think about. <laughs> <They're> probably <laughs> pissing off a lot of people listening. Like, oh, how would he not know that? <laughs> <laughs> this guy doesn't what an know. Idiot. Some guy, some fat guy in a Metallica shirt's flipping off his radio. Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy from White Snake, he was the one that was married to uh, Tony Katane. Oh, okay. Well, and they had the chick on the hood of the car that made her famous. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was him. Yeah, so. you ever heard of Angeline? She's from Hollywood, like L.A. She wears pink, and she's on billboards everywhere. She mm. has a pink Corvette. She drives a pink Corvette. Actually, like, took pictures of her right before we, uh, we came on tour, and she is so weird, you know? <laughs> she's nice, but, you know, she's, like, 80 years old with, like, tr- size triple G fake boobs. And oh, gosh. She, like, believes in aliens and all this stuff. And <laughs> She probably didn't like that he was following her around for, like, an hour and a half. That's <laughs> why I saw your pictures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so weird. I was following her. And, like, <laughs> she didn't like the fact that I was taking all these photos. She it's didn't weird. get it. She didn't yeah. get it. Yeah, she believes in aliens. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you guys are going to be at Bogarts tonight. Uh, we already mentioned that uh, you guys got a few openers that uh, you got to escape the fade. And uh, all hail the Yeti, which I'm excited to, to see. Them. And then what was the other one that's going to three pill morning. morning? Okay, so great guys too. They're all going to be there tonight. Uh, doors, Erica, you said are six thirty. Okay, so doors are at six, and then six thirty. Okay, yeah. so that's Erica's a, in the studio. She's a hot little redshed bombshell. Redshed, redhead. <laughs> she really bombshell. is. Redshed. <laughs> the <great>. <laughs> <laughs> Diamond in the rough. You guys can get your tickets at the box office, LiveNation.com if you want, but just go to the box office and uh, just be there. Yeah. Okay, that's what we want. Now we like to do this little thing called the lightning round. And this is where we ask really stupid questions, and you give us the dumb answers right back to us, okay? All right. So let's get into it. And everybody gets their own answer, so it's not one united answer. All right, since you guys are hungry, favorite fast food place to go when you guys are on the road? And you can't say in and out because that's California. No. You fast can't say food? that. You got to be out on the road. Rob Halford's Kitchen. <laughs> There isn't any, uh, you know, because I'm used to the only fast food I eat is not at home, and it's Del Taco or uh, or In and Out. So. Wh- which one? Which one of you guys used to wear the Del Taco? That's Charlie C. Charlie, okay. Yeah. I, just, I remember reading about that. And I was just like, that that's genius. Yeah, <laughs> it was like where we're from. Like people would know about it and stuff. You know, it, it McDonald's, evolved. dude. <laughs> <laughs> Bam, McDonald's. Big Mac, fries, orange soda. Screw that noise. Yeah. Jimmy John's or like Steak and Shake. Yeah, I'd say Steak and Shake or Jimmy John's. Jimmy John's isn't fast food. It's like it is. It's yeah, something. It it's fast counts. Yeah, that counts. They're Look, very fast. Their advertisement says so fast. <laughs> they're what he'll make yeah. it spin. <laughs> so when I think of fast food, I'm thinking of French fries, soda. Burgers, you know. He's a huge Greece. McDonald's fan, you know. Him and uh, Ronald oh, McDonald used to go to school together, so yeah. he's just trying to Ronald plug McDonald's. him right now. Not only does he Donald. burgle butts, but he likes to the hamburglar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys are sports fans, I'm guessing. Uh, team or sport that you guys argue the most about? 
Hmm. I don't know. Some Bat- of these guys. Basketball. Ba- these, yeah, some of the guys, uh, Johnny Three Tears and Charlie, they argue about basketball a uh, lot, you know, because some are Lakers fans and some are not. Like, I'm personally not a basketball fan. I'm a football fan. Who's your, who's your squad since you guys don't have I'm one? I'm a Niners fan. Niners? All right. Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. Since last year, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I have photos in my phone of 14 years old, okay? Basketball is the only sport that everybody argues over. Yeah. Football, we all watch together. It's like a collective thing. LA doesn't have a team, yeah. but definitely argue over basketball. Basketball? Well, Our well, dogs are just killing it right Lakers now. Lakers and Clippers arguments or what? Uh, a little bit, just everything, you know. Someone loves the Lakers, someone just hates the Lakers, and it's like... I think it's more about the players, too. Yeah, yeah. and you know, in basket, the world of basketball, there's so much drama, you know? It's ridiculous. So, so we start arguing <laughs> about, like, no, he's just a wussy, and then, like, no, he's not, he's a good player, like, and, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. He's got heart. All right, yeah. favorite bands or MCs when you guys were growing up? Ice Cube. Cube? How about all of N.W.A.? Yeah, basically. I like <laughs> Bone Thugs and Harmony. Honestly, I didn't really listen to a lot of hip hop, but I loved East 1999. Yeah, it's my favorite record. Does anybody know what they're saying in any other songs? Because uh, they go so fast. Maybe Funny Man does. He's like, <laughs> yeah, I get it. I see it. <laughs> and uh, I like Corn. I grew up love listening to Corn ever since like 1994 when it yeah. first started. Yeah, Easy E, uh, rap wise, and Black Sabbath. Love hip hop was in there too, but. It was weird, you know, as a young teenager, you know, it introduced me to, like, older music and metal and stuff, but I somehow found Black Sabbath, probably through skate videos or something, and mm-hmm. like, fell in love with them. Yeah, good, good. Favorite, all those... uh, favorite classic rock for me, I guess, Queen, uh, Beatles, you know, but modern. It's hard for me to, like, find new stuff, but I like some, some of the older band. I don't know, this band, Glass Draw, always with okay. me. But... Yeah, I try to think about it, like... Of what year it is now, like, all right, in the 90s when you're young and like, yeah. you're thinking about the bands, like, man, I loved Pearl Jam and I loved Stone Temple Pilots and it still resonates, like, now, like, we still listen he, to that He stuff. called this the lightning round, fellas. You guys are <laughs> spilling your oh, life stories on. and stuff like that. You want to know where I went to school? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your childhood. Yeah. Let's get deep. Get comfortable there on the hot seat. Just not talking about tunes. Favorite superhero? Wolverine. Superman. Wait, what? Wolverine, what'd you have? Man of Steel. Man of Steel. Did you see the movie? I haven't. Uh, it's good. You'll like it. Uh, I saw it. Uh, Superman. Superman. No yeah. Batmans here, huh? Uh, Heartbroken. Heartbroken. Favorite video game to play against each other on the road? Oh, man. What do you guys, what do you guys oh, get God, crazy about? I want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. What's this, that Justice League one versus yeah. Mortal Kombat? Mm-hmm. Mortal Kombat DC. Right right yeah. Here. We go at it. Dude, it Curls gets intense, here, kills man. it. J Dog. J Dog's all right. I'm making a comeback right yeah, now. Yeah, he's making a comeback. We broke a controller, so we're actually not playing right now. I, I hate know. it when that happens. <laughs> Just throwing it. You're like, it's horse. Yeah. Put you know, on other games to try to, like, all right, let's try, like, something else. It always goes back to Mortal Kombat. Yeah. <laughs> it's where it all begins. People standing around drinking, just talking crap. Yeah, they escaped the fake dudes before. Like, oh, go, come on our bus. This was, like, on a previous tour. Like, oh, we got Mortal Kombat. I was like, oh, I've never played. Let me try. Ah, <laughs> suckers. <laughs> yeah. so smeared them all over the place. <laughs> You're like, I don't even know what this does. What yeah. am I doing? I don't get it. What does that mean? Yeah, I killed work? you. Is this good? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is this working? <laughs> Favorite post-show beverage. You guys are done with your set. You're off stage. You're ready to kick it for the night. Post your beverage. Beer. Everything, man. I Everything. drink anything that's on the bus or around me. I'll drink. I'm yeah. talking like whiskey, vodka, champagne. I'll mix it all together and everything. We don't yeah. complain. No, uh, not this. picky drinkers. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's the end of our lighting round. That's all I got no, for that's you. That's all you got. That's it. Uh, hey, we we got to get you guys some lunch so you guys. We got to get some people to call in and ask you some questions. Like, you guys do that. We we could we could do that if we want to. How long are you guys gonna stick around? When do you, when, we gotta be up by five. All right, so, all right. Erica says you guys can stay. You guys want to stay? Nothing to do tonight. That should be the place that you would want to be. Yeah. Come on out and have some oh, fun with man. us. So get wild. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> that was a little creepy. Right I know. There. Well, <laughs> he, I am. He creeps me out every day. Yeah. <laughs> this is a normal thing. You go to his bunk. Wake up, J Dog. Wake up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do you guys want to get some food? Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what's a normal uh, wake up time for you guys when he's going to creep in and whisper well, that into your ear? Us three here, we wake up usually uh, around 11 or so, 11 a.m. Well, it's not too bad. No, no. Today, well, today was one. I mean, we all rolled out of bed at one, but they're also up till six in the morning every day, seven in the morning. So it's like, oh, you wake up so late. Sometimes I'm like, I need to get out of bed, man. It's like, it's 11 o'clock, but then I get up and everyone else is still sleeping. And I'm like, all right, there's nothing to do. Yeah, I think you're just on a bus the whole time. Well, so. we're not going to lie. We do drink pretty much every single day. And the only way to maintain that is, I guess, by like working out and getting <laughs> up and doing other things. 
What are some other activities you guys like to do on the road other than uh, throwing, we play throwing some, back? Play uh, some cornhole, you know, bat. We call there bags, you go. cornhole. Yeah. We love See, no, I, that. I'm because I'm from St. Louis, and the first time I ever heard the phrase cornhole was not because of a game. It was you oh, know oh. the the sexual version of it. Oh, so when okay. I moved here, and oh, everybody's yeah, like, yeah, "Hey, yeah, you yeah. guys want to play cornhole?" And I'm like, "No, no, I don't." Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's why. Why we call is everybody it bags? asking me this? Yeah. That's yeah. why we call it bags. Bags. We call it bags. I was like, "Oh, cornhole." We gamble a lot too. There's a game called Cela with three dice, and we do that like a lot. Yeah. And sometimes like twenty people will be in a circle playing dice. That's pretty. That's a it good gets time uh, intense. I would imagine yeah. play some video games. You know, we, we work on music a lot too. I mean, we do writing on the road. I think the we are. And I don't think I know, but the single we are. We started. We wrote that on the road. So now I was going to ask you. Do you guys got get a chance? Cause some some people don't like doing that on the road. They like to be in the studio doing the, well, the work way it part works of with it. Us, but. There's so many of us. So uh, there's a lot of different things to do. I, you know, like what? It, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, it's usually just writing and pre-production. You know, we got a whole like recording set up mobile, but it's not like we're gonna finish a song on the road. But we definitely get stuff mm. started, so that's what we do. The coolest thing we actually did a couple of days ago. We were in Indianapolis, and we decided to go to a horror convention because one of the guys that was starring in uh, the Dead Bite video that we just did. Yeah, he's like, uh, was it Derek Mears? Yeah, Derek Mears. He yeah, plays, from uh, Jason. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was doing it, and then we. we I never been to one of those before. You know, you, I grew up in L.A. and we have Comic Con in like San Diego, and it's right. like a bunch of nerds. But we actually went and had the best time. Like the food, awesome. and then you can yeah, came nerds stuff. ourselves. Him yeah. and uh, because Derek's a friend of mine, and uh, he hangs out with Tyler Main, like who played uh, played uh, Michael Myers. Michael Myers, and I went to Halloween Horror Nights with those two dudes, and. You know, people are jumping out of like, you know, Wah! trying to scare out of these mazes. <laughs> Tyler Maine's like 6'9". He's nine. ginormous. Derek Mears yeah. is like 6'7". So people were jumping out and actually getting scared that those dudes were turning the corner. And like, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> There's just faces like you never thought you'd see. Like I saw Rowdy Roddy Piper and I was like, I can't believe this. I was loved he, wrestling. Was, he, was he there signing or was he just yeah, there? Yeah, he was signing. Yeah, oh, okay. like all these different actors. Danny Trejo. Past yeah. and present, you know. Yeah, Danny Trejo was holding just... like a Komodo dragon in his hand. <laughs> we're like sitting there like. <gasps> he was Danny Trejo was chilling with Eddie Munster and I just had to say it. I was like, damn, it's Eddie and Machete. <laughs> <laughs> Like, who would have thought that Machete and Eddie Monster would be kicking it? <laughs> yeah, just totally hanging out. With Piper over there on the side doing oh, his, yeah. thing. Oh, uh, his thing. Lita Ford was there, too. There you yeah, go. Yeah. Was, was, uh, was he in full kilt? Or was oh, he no, in he was in casual wear, okay. but you can't miss that, that face. You no. know what I'm saying? You gotta know that one. <laughs> Still, what was that name of that movie where he was in it? He was in that horror movie where it's like that long ass fight scene and he's got the. Uh, I'm sure he had photos on sale. I'm guessing that's what it was for. It, yeah. Because. It was where like you could put the sunglasses on and you could see like the oh that was demons um, or something. That's where that obey came from. It's called They Live. That's what it's called. There it is. Yeah. That's, yeah. Why, that's why I'm good. Okay. That's where the Mike Giant got that obey thing from. Oh, all right. So yeah, I mean, I tripped out. Cool. Honestly, Linda Blair was there. I thought they like there so were so many was, yeah so stars. Many, yeah. It was it was almost too much. You didn't know what to like. You're like Holy Keith David too. Man. Keith David, yeah. So we had uh, not too long ago. We had the guys from uh, The Walking Dead were at a, a, a convention just like that. Really? Not yeah. quite the size of the one you guys are talking about, but uh, we just had it. it was the first time it came through and yeah. sold out for all three days. Like it was just madness. It's amazing. I went there just to hang out. Derek's like, yeah, check it out. I was like, all right. And I ended up spending like tons of money. Like, I need that shirt, that shirt, that shirt. Like, yeah, you can find thing. stuff at those things you can't. Which you're which you're anyway. rocking right now. The yeah. Child's Play Three. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a keeper right there. <laughs> no, we we definitely try to venture out and do different things. It just depends on where we are and the, the schedule and the day. But right. music, playing games, mostly a lot of drinking. There you go. <laughs> Life of a rock star. Well, uh, we're going to wrap things up so we can get you guys out of here so you guys can go do your thing. But uh, the album, Noises from the Underground, out in the uh, Notes from the Underground. No, did I put it wrong? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Good. I kind of like that name, though. The noises. noises. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's available yeah. now if you guys want to pick it up. But if you want to see these guys do their thing live, it's a great show. I've seen them three times now. We'll make it four tonight. He's going to be on the side stage drunk, probably. The I whole hope time. so. <laughs> <laughs> Bogarts is where it's going to be tonight. Go to bogarts.com, livenation.com, or hit up the box office. Gentlemen, thank you guys for coming in. And, Thanks uh, for having us. We'll thank see you out at the show tonight. We're going to go into uh, a band that we were talking off air about how uh, you guys have been a big Avenged Sevenfold fans it's for uh, your quite some time. nightmare. So we're going to do uh, some uh, So Far Away from Avenged Sevenfold. Slow oh, it down. My favorite go 